Good day. Welcome to the 18th lecture of Metal for me. In this class, we are going to discuss about the drawing operation. So, in the last class, we discussed uh, extrusion operation. In case of extrusion operation, the plastic deformation is happened by, um, by means of uh, pushing the raw material through a, a very small uh, die opening. But the main difference between the drawing operation and the extrusion operation is that in case of drawing operation, we apply the external force in terms of pulling. Okay, here we have a set of die and we pull the raw material through the die for the plastic deformation. So, that is the main difference between the uh, extrusion operation and the drawing operation. So, the drawing operation is somewhat similar to the extrusion operation except that uh, in drawing the bar or the raw material which is under tension. But in case of uh, extrusion, the raw material is under compression because we apply the uh, external force, uh, ex compressive or push external force is applied in case of extrusion. But here we apply a tensile force or pulling force for, uh, for the plastic deformation of the material through the small die. So, that is the main difference between the extrusion operation and the drawing operation. So, here we pulling it through a converging die that is extrusion operation. So, we can make uh, different varieties of uh, materials or products using ex uh, drawing operations and we got good surface finish and good accuracy final products from this uh, drawing operation and so and we do not need any uh, secondary finishing process after the drawing process since it is producing very good surface finish uh, product from this operation and we can make basically this drawing operation is used to make uh, rods and wires. And the first main product which is make is rods and which can be used to for making shaft, spindle, uh, then structure members like I section, I section, etc. And uh, different raw material for fasteners uh, such as bolt, screw, uh, we can make uh, using these rods. So, these rods uh, we can reduce the diameter or we can vary the cross section of the rods using the drawing operation. That is the uh, first important application of the drawing process. Second one is the we can make uh, different types of wires. Uh, we know in case of electrical cables, we are using very small diameter wire. So, to reduce the diameter of the wire, the best uh, manufacturing process is wire drawing process. So, we can make different types of wires and uh, wire products using drawing operation. And other than these electrical wires, we can make different cables, spring, the spring rods, we can, um, uh, we, uh, spring wires, we can create by drawing operation and the strings for the musical instruments can be made using this wire drawing operation. So, uh, this is very important, uh, the musical instrument string should have very good strength. So, by means of this drawing operation, we can increase the strength of the uh, final product by strain hardening. So, uh, we can use it for uh, musical instruments, string, then paper clips, uh, fencing wires and weld electrodes and uh, shopping carts, etc. We can make using uh, this wire products. And uh, commonly, we can make uh, different varieties of diameter wire and uh, as small as 0 0.025 mm. So, that is the importance of the drawing operation. So, uh, next we will see a drawing operation. So, this is my uh, input material and this is the die. So, when I uh, pull the material or uh, when we apply external tensile force onto this material and it uh, converts, um, it passes through the convergent die uh, and its diameter or its size is reduced and its length increased. You can see, see this, its diameter is this much, the input material diameter is this much and when it passes through the die, its diameter is reduced and here I am applying a pulling force. We can see the reduction in diameter and uh, the uh, to maintain the volume consistency, the reduction in diameter is con uh, compensated with the increasing length. And this is the wire drawing operation. Here we can see this is the die. This one is the die. And when we pull the material through the <coughs> small opening die and uh, we wound over this caption, we can make a very small diameter products. This is the wire, wire drawing process. So, we can make this type of products using this uh, drawing operation. So, we can see the drawing operation in ind industry. This is 
a rod drawing operation and this is the instrument used to uh, used to pull the uh, rod this is the rod and which is coming out from this die we can see the die here this is the die area and this is the rod which is coming out uh, under the tensile force and this one is the uh, instrument or the part which is used to apply the tensile force onto the material This is the final product. This is the raw drawing process. And this is the wire drawing process, uh, which is similar to the raw drawing process, but here the diameter can be reduced to very small value in case of wire drawing process. And here, this is the uh, die. This one, this black color one is the die, and we fed the um, wire or uh, a rod in, through the die and this is a convergent die and this is the setup used for applying the pulling force so when we pull the material through the die this diameter is reduced so this this part is the die this is the die part this is the die opening So by means of plaster deformation, the raw material uh, size is reduced, uh, which is a cylindrical member. Its diameter is reduced and its length is increased after the drawing. So this is the method to create different types of wire products. So here we pull the wire, we apply the pulling force here. So this is the uh, setup here here we can see this is uh, the input material raw material uh, it may be a, a wire uh, it may be a rod or shaft etc so the raw material sorry uh, it's not shaft it is a, a either billet or any raw material and we kept in the lubricating area it may be a solid lubricant or liquid lubricant and uh, we uh, pass it through this convergent die. This is the convergent die. We make this die using high hardness material like a carpet uh, or high strength steel etc. And uh, this is the setup used to uh, pull the material through the convergent die. And he, here we clamp the one end of the material and we pull in this direction. This is the direction of the movement. And uh, so when it passes through the uh, convergent die we can see initially this much diameter it has but after the uh, after when it passed through the convergent die its diameter is reduced and uh, automatically its length of will increase so this is the drawing of the rod similar setup can be used for drawing of the wire also so the large quantities of wire rod tubes and other sections are produced by this drawing process and here the material is pulled that is the main important thing the, we apply the pulling force or tensile force for the uh, plastic deformation and we reduce the diameter or we re reduce the size of the material 
and uh, with the desired shape. It's dependent upon the shape of the die. According to the cross section of the die, uh, we got the output product. If the cross section is uh, circular cross section, we got output cylindrical material. But if it is a I section, the cross section of the die is an I section, we got an output I section structure member. So, based on the cross section of the die, we got the corresponding uh, output product. And a typical wire drawing operation one end of the wire is reduced and passed through the opening of the die and gripped and pulled uh, to reduce the diameter. If it is a rod, uh, here we can see this is the die area and uh, here this is the initial diameter after pulling we can see we apply the pulling force we reduce the diameter so here uh, there are different terminologies uh, when we uh, study the mechanics of the wire drawing process here initial diameter of the material is a0 after the drawing operation is diameter is reduced to af here we apply a tensile force f at the end of the uh, material and this is the die area this uh, this area is the die area and here we can see this is a conical area okay so it's a convergent area and in the convergent area the angle the angle of conversion is alpha that is called a die angle so this is the die angle alpha this is not flat area it's not like this it's not a flat area it is a converging area like this okay the die die area and uh, this angle is the die angle we can see the uh, enlarged view of this point and this angle is the die angle and after the die angle there is a small area land area which is a flat area and actually the deformation the entire deformation is uh, happening in this area and after the deformation uh, we are not uh, kept the die area as a flat like this this is not flat after the deformation for the easy removal of the material from the die, we uh, actually uh, diver, we provide a divergent area. Okay, here we can see it's not flat. Uh, we provide some divergence at the uh, exit region of the die. So this is the uh, main terminology associated with this uh, mechanics of wire or rod drawing, and this is called relief angle. This divergence, how much is provided is uh, is explained in terms of relief angle. So, uh, similar to the extrusion process, here also we can calculate the amount of drawing stress required uh, in case of ideal, uh, ideal case uh, with the uh, redundancy and uh, with, uh, in case of actual, actual how much uh, force is required in the actual practical application. So, we can derive the equation similar to the extrusion. There is no change in the equation, the entire thing is same. But the only difference is that in case of extrusion, we apply the compressive force. Uh, here in this drawing operation, we apply the pulling force or tensile force into the material. That is the only difference that the equations are same. So, here uh, in the ideal case, we consider that uh, there is no friction between the die and the workpiece and there is no redundant work associated with the drawing operation. So, we neglect the two conditions, friction and the redundant work in case of ideal deformation. So, here um, uh, this equation is already, I explained how this equation is derived. Uh, which explain the extrusion area. So, this uh, amount of uh, stress required in the or tensile stress required for the drawing operation sigma d is equal to sigma y log a0 by f. A log a0 by f is the strain, true strain required for the drawing operation and sigma y is the uh, yield point because this is here also we uh, another assumption is no strain hardening. That is uh, the next assumption, no strain hardening. strain hardness. So, this will be the graph. This will be the graph. If there is no strain hardness, it is a per, uh, perfect plastic deformation. So, um, that means at sigma y, then their deformation will happen. So, here we apply instead of flow stress, we apply sigma y. Okay. So, sigma d is equal to sigma y into log a0 by af and uh, here we can calculate the sigma d and uh, then multiply the sigma d with the af. We got the force required for the drawing. How much amount of pulling, pull has to apply for the drawing? This much, this F can be calculated. So, this is the F, F value. So, F is equal to AF into, instead of sigma D, we can give this equation, sigma Y into log A0 by AF. 
and here this this equation is applicable only for the material which is perfectly plastic there is no strain hardening if there is a strain hardening instead of we using sigma y we are using flow stress of the material or average flow stress of the material throughout the and if we complete from starting to ending um, actually the flow stress is varying um, when we draw the stress strain graph so this is the uh, at this point this much is the flow stress at this point this much is the flow stress so we take the average flow stress uh, for the uh, to calculate the force required for the entire operation so here the average flow stress equation we this is already we studied the sigma dash f that is equal to k epsilon raised to n divided by n plus 1 so we can substitute the average flow stress instead of sigma y here so sigma average flow stress sigma dash f this is sigma dash f is equal to uh, k epsilon raised to n divided by n plus 1 so this is the case of with the strain hardening here no friction no friction no um, redundancy and uh, mm, but there is a strain hardening there is a strain hardening For such case we use this equation and if no friction no redundancy no strain hardening then we use this equation okay and here we can see the variation of the stress and strain along the deformation zone here we can see the deformation starting point is this point and the deformation is ending here and when we see uh, look on this uh, variation of the stress so here we can see some amount of stress is required for the deformation and it is increasing the stress is increasing this is a true stress strain graph so the stress amount of stress required for the deformation is increasing or the amount of stress required for the plastic deformation or the uh, to maintain the flow of material is increasing so here actually this is sigma dash f sigma dash f is not y dash this is sigma dash f this is the sigma y sigma y okay and here this is a strain hardened material at this point at this point if you take this point so correspondingly we have a epsilon 1 strain at this point we have epsilon 1 strain corresponding to epsilon 1 we have a sigma 1 strain sigma 1 but uh, during the deformation because of strain hardening at this point the strain required is epsilon 2 corresponding to epsilon 2 the amount of stress required is increasing to sigma 2 sigma dash sigma f2 sigma f2 so initially it was sigma f1 so it is increasing from sigma f1 to sigma f2 so similarly throughout the deformation with respect to increasing deformation or increasing strain value the amount of stress required for the deformation also will increase okay that is the concept of flow stress so that is actually uh, shown here the stress is actually varying or increasing with respect to the amount of deformation and here we can see the strain also and we know the the diameter is gradually decreasing from a0 to af so there will be a strain increase increase in strain that we can determine log a0 by af from x entry to exit region the strain is increasing this is a true strain that is natural logarithm of a0 by so the stress is and the strain also increase from starting point to ending point during the deformation and this is the different uh, first condition uh, we already discussed that uh, uh, ideal case ideal case without friction but in actual case we know there will be a friction between the die and the work piece so uh, we, we should consider the friction also so here in this uh, if you take uh, this problem uh, here there will be a friction uh, the material actually moving in this direction so there will be friction force f a friction force f is developed between the die and the workpiece and how uh, how much is the friction if this is the uh, this is the normal force and the coefficient of friction between the die and the workpiece is mu then the friction force f is equal to mu n okay so that is the friction between the workpiece and a uh, die so in actual case there will be a friction even we are even though we are using uh, lubrications there will be a small amount of mu value between the die and the work piece so we should consider the friction also so this is the case we consider ideal deformation with the friction that means here we uh, also neglect uh, the redundant work the amount of redundant work is neglected here uh, i already explained what is redundant work in case of extrusion uh, we discussed about that during the extrusion process when the material is flowing material is flowing like this this is the diagram of material flow some amount of material in this area in this area some amount of material 
will be in a uh, actually in a dead zone this is called dead zone this also is called a dead zone so the material uh, we should apply an extra energy or extra work to for the additional shearing of the or additional uh, to overcome the shearing strain of the material in the dead zone because the, there is a less provision for the material to flow from this region to the exit region into this dye region okay so we need to apply additional amount of energy or work for the movement of the material in the dead zone that is the redundant work so here in this case we consider only the friction the we we are not considering any redundant work we can assume that the material flow here it is a very smooth flow there is no such a um, dead zone creation here and actually the dead zone creation is dependent upon the die angle here we assume that uh, there is no such a dead zone or uh, redundant work is zero but there is a friction so when we consider the friction here if the p the pressure uh, applied between the die and the workpiece is p then we know the friction corresponding is equal to mu p mu p and the normal pressure is equal to p so mu into p is the uh, frictional pressure the pressure corresponding to friction and this is uh, similar to the what we studied in the case of forging uh, we take a small element then we uh, consider the equilibrium of the horizontal forces uh, so by uh, considering the equilibrium of the horizontal forces we can develop the equation to calculate the drawing force required in this uh, ideal case of vector friction i am not going to explain the derivation for this and uh, after the derivation we got this equation this is the equation after derivation which is similar to the uh, slab analysis of forging forging process uh, where we actually uh, consider the horizontal uh, forces and uh, we balance the horizontal forces and uh, after uh, integration and, uh, and different uh, elimination process we got a final equation similarly here also we got sigma d that is the drawing force how much amount of stress has to apply here sigma d how much amount of stress sigma d has to apply here for the drawing of a material with the flow stress or yield stress here we uh, give yield stress sigma y so we assume that uh, this is a uh, there is no strain hardening no strain hardening here strain hardening if we use sigma y but if there is a strain hardening strain hardening then instead of sigma y use sigma f here we use sigma f flow stress of the material so that is a little different so here this is equation for no strain hardening uh, we consider no strain hardening there and here in this equation uh, what are the different factors which are affecting the drawing force um, first one is the material material property the amount of st flow stress or yield stress of the material if the flow stress of the yield stress is very less we can easily draw with a very low amount of drawing stress and the second one is the alpha value that is the uh, die angle and the third one is the mu mu value mu is the coefficient of friction and uh, this is the actually af by a, a0 is the reduction the percentage reduction in the material okay if the percentage reduction is higher then of course the sigma d value also will increase and uh, we can see the reduction raised to mu cot alpha that means there is a uh, huge importance for the reduction value so these are the different factors which are affecting the sigma d So next one is the actual force in case of actual case we should consider the frictional force we should consider the strain hardening and also we should consider the redundant work also so here this is the actual case and similar uh, in case of actual case also we can develop the equation and this is the equation after the derivation i am not going to explain the derivation this is not uh, uh, not the part of your syllabus so this is the uh, final equation after the derivation we, we consider the redundancy work friction and the strain hardening so here when we consider the strain hardening we are uh, either we use the flow stress or average flow stress of the material if we consider the strain uh, or the drawing force or drawing stress for the entire operation from the starting to ending then we use the average flow stress of the material or at a particular point how much amount of drawing stress is required or drawing force is required then instead of the average flow stress we use sigma f okay so that is the material property and thus this term this term is actually the considering the friction and uh, this uh, uh, friction frictional force so the this first part first part uh, that is ideal and the frictional component is considered here in the 
uh, first part this is the region or area of the equation where we consider the uh, ideal case with the friction okay and that we already discussed here uh, in the previous equation this is the equation with the ideal with the friction so that is the first part okay and the second part we consider the redundant work this much is the uh, this is the addition that means some amount of extra work has to supply or some amount of stress additional stress has to supply during the drawing process to compensate the redundant work so this second part is the uh, part which is uh, incorporate uh, actually used for incorporating the redundant work so this is the actual drawing force required in the drawing operation so here we can see the variation of the die pressure and the die drawing stress here from that this is the entry region this is the entry region entry this is the exit region so from the entry to exit region we can see the drawing stress is increasing amount of uh, stress uh, during the drawing process is increasing but here in this graph we can see the drawing pressure die pressure sorry die pressure is decreasing from the entry to exit region so the drawing stress is increasing drawing pressure is reducing so that variation is very important so what are the different factors which are affecting the drawing pressure so drawing pressure is uh, is equal to sigma f minus sigma sigma f is the flow stress of the material and sigma is the tensile stress in the deformation zone at a particular diameter so here we can see uh, the uh, actually in the when we apply drawing force here we can see so this is my material okay so when we apply drawing force sigma d we apply here but when we apply sigma d at this point at this point this is the point end point this is the end point this is the region where we up we have we have to apply maximum sigma d so the tensile stress will be maximum at the exit region but this tensile stress uh, applied tensile stress in this region is gradually decreasing towards the end region that is why it is decreasing we can see at the exit region it is maximum sigma d value and it is reducing up to the uh, when it uh, progressing towards the end region okay so sigma d is decreasing so uh, if you take uh, a point here here this is the region where maximum tensile stress is so it is subjected to maximum tensile stress but here the center region will be a medium amount of tensile stress is the uh, uh, actually applied for the deformation but the end region very minimum amount of tensile stress is applied for the deformation so here from this equation we can, we can say the p is equal to sigma f minus sigma so of course the sigma f if you take a material with a without strain hardening that means a perfectly plastic material sigma f will be constant so with respect to sigma at the end region this sigma the tensile stress will be minimum so uh, this uh, actually the minus sigma that means uh, if sigma is minimum then pressure will be maximum that is why here it is maximum but the exit region the sigma value is maximum so this is a subtraction so the pr final pressure will be minimum so the draw, uh, die pressure will be uh, actually decreasing nature from the entry to exit but the drawing stress is increasing from the entry to exit region so that is the variation of the die pressure and drawing stress and drawing at elevated temperature so far we discuss about the cold drawing process in case of cold drawing process the uh, the influence of the temperature is a uh, is negligible uh, so there is no uh, increase in uh, temperature to a particular uh, higher value but here when we do a hot drawing process hot drawing process that means the workpiece uh, is under high temperature then um, we already discussed that uh, there is an influence of the um, strain strain rate strain rate is an influencing factor so if the this is a graph showing the strain rate and uh, strength this is the strength region and if the temperature is very high then the significance of this strain rate is also very high with respect to strength but if the temperature is very small for example 30 degrees Celsius then with respect to increase in the strain rate the variation of the strength is very low 
there is no we can see there is no much increase in the strength with respect to increase in strain rate. but if the temperature is very high with respect to increase in the strain rate we can see the strength or the flow stress required is also is increasing okay so there is an influence of the or the significance of the strain rate and uh, under very high temperature so if you do a uh, drawing process at elevated temperature then of course the strain rate also will be a important factor so in that case we should incorporate the strain rate equation in for our drawing stress equation so here this is a strain rate equation uh, in case of drawing at the elevated temperature so here after first calculating the average strain rate the flow stress and average flow stress of the material can be calculated and substitute in the appropriate equation so from this strain rate corresponding to the strain rate this is the average strain rate from this average strain rate we can calculate either sigma f or sigma dash f and then substitute the sigma f and the sigma dash f in the previous equations in this equation okay in this equation we uh, actually supply the sigma f or sigma dash f um, with the incorporating the strain rate because under high elevated temperature strain rate is an important factor or significant factor next influencing factor is the dive angle yeah, either in the hot forging or sorry hot drawing process or cold drawing process the dive angle is an important factor so the we should uh, identify a particular drawing process from a0 to af that is the reduction a0 to af what is the optimum die angle alpha then only we we can um, classically deform or we can reduce the um, make a draw or we can do the drawing process with a minimum drawing force okay for that we should know the alpha value that is the optimum die angle that is that has the lower uh, drawing force okay so here we can see the drawing uh, process the die angle versus sigma d by sigma dash f uh, here we use a dimensionless um, strength time that is sigma d by sigma dash uh, we uh, neglect the influence of the flow stress by dividing sigma d with the sigma dash f this is actually sigma dash f okay so here the drawing force we can see the drawing force is increasing with respect to die angle we can see but here actually this is like uh, actually not exactly increasing first it is decreasing then increasing so here we can see first decreasing then increasing decreasing then increasing decreasing increasing so there is a point in in every graph so this is actually um, the this different color it is showing here is percentage of reduction that is a0 by af a0 by af okay so we, uh, for different a0 by af for example a0 by af is equal to 45 percentage then this is the graph okay so when we draw the di relation between the die angle and uh, the drawing force we can see at this point at this die angle that means this die angle the drawing force required is minimum drawing force required is minimum okay so this is the optimum die angle in case of 45 percentage of reduction alpha is equal to 8 is the optimum die angle similarly for 20 percentage of reduction a0 by af is equal to 20 percentage then this is a graph here initially it is decreasing then increasing so this is the point um, we can say this is phi alpha is equal to phi is the optimum die angle with a minimum d sigma d sigma d is equal to minimum here that means the amount of drawing force required or drawing stress required for drawing operation is minimum when alpha is equal to phi uh, for 20 percentage reduction okay so from this graph we can identify what is the optimum die angle corresponding to particular percentage of reduction and uh, how much we can reduce for example uh, i take a rod with a zero cross section and uh, I want to reduce into very small diameter. This is the diameter AF. Okay, is it possible to convert this A0 rod into AF wire? Is it possible? So, how much I can reduce uh, without any fracture? During the um, drawing process, when we pull the material through the die opening, there is a chance for fracture. Instead of plastic deformation of the material, uh, and the reduction in diameter 
there may be a chance for the elongation or there may be a chance for the fracture of the material. So, without fracture, how much I can deform, deform the material. So, that is actually explained using the stem, maximum reduction per pass. Per pass, how much I can reduce. For example, initial cross-section area may be uh, 100 uh, mm square. Okay. I want to reduce into uh, 10 mm square. Is it possible to reduce from 100 to 10 mm square? Is it possible? So, uh, to check that, we can use this uh, term maximum reduction per pass for a round uh, rod or round. Okay. So, for that, what we do? So, during the drawing process, So this is my material, here I am applying sigma d, okay. So when I apply sigma d value, the actually the uh, deformation should happen here. This is the deformation region, okay, where we, uh, when, I, when we apply uh, stress uh, sigma d, actually without elongation. So actually when we apply sigma d, there is a chance for the elongation of the material in the length dash. Okay, so here we don't need any such type of elongation. We need reduction in diameter. Actually, when we do drawing process, we need this type of reduction. This is the actual deformation required during the uh, drawing process. But if the sigma d value is greater than a particular value, then instead of this reduction, instead of this plastic deformation in terms of reduction of diameter, there is a chance for the elongation of the material. Okay, in slow reduction, there will be a chance of elongation of the material. Elongation in, uh, only, okay, without any reduction in diameter. So, this may happen during the drawing process. So, what happened? Uh, elongation without any uh, reduction in the diameter. Then, after a particular amount of elongation, the material will start to fail. Okay, it's fractured. So, how much I can apply? How much sigma d I can apply? The sigma d I can apply is equal to the sigma y of this material okay if it is greater than sigma y of the material then the material starts to elongate without any drawing uh, or reduction in diameter the material starts to elongate and uh, leads to fracture okay so to avoid that the sigma d applied the sigma d applied at the end of the rod should be less than sigma y of the material the yield stress of the material Otherwise, if it is greater than sigma d greater than sigma y, without any reduction, there will be a elongation of the material at the end and leads to the fracture of the material. So, we already studied the sigma d equation for the ideal case without friction and redundancy. This is the equation for sigma d and the limiting condition is that it is equal to sigma y or we can say this is should be less than or equal to sigma y. This is the limiting condition. Okay. So, it should not be greater than sigma d should not, should not be greater than sigma y value. If it is greater than sigma y value, there will be elongation and leads to the fracture. So, this sigma d, this sigma d value always less than the sigma y of the material. So, that is the condition. So, by applying this condition, uh, by applying this condition, we can calculate the maximum reduction per pass. So, here for a material uh, without strain honey, this is the equation sigma y log a 0 by a f. So, by equating with the sigma y, we, from that we can calculate the maximum reduction per pass because sigma d equal to sigma y is the limiting condition without elongation. So, the sigma y and the sigma y is uh, cut here. So, log a 0 by a f is equal to 1. So, from this log a 0 by a f, uh, when we take the log to the right side, uh, it tends to uh, exponential e. So, uh, a 0 minus a f is equal to e and a 0 minus a f by a 0 equal to 1 minus 1 by e that is equal to 0.63 or 63 percentage. So, in an ideal condition without friction, without strain hardening, without redundancy work, maximum reduction is 63 percentage. That means, if you take a rod with a 100 mm square cross section, maximum reduction is 63 percentage. Okay, 63 percentage I can reduce uh, the diameter.
that is the uh, main important thing about the maximum reduction per pass okay so we can use number of pass if we need more than 63 percent reduction then what we can do we can do more than one pass after first uh, during the first pass we can uh, reduce up to 63 percentage of reduction then we can do next pass where also we can uh, again we can reduce the diameter okay so we can do multiple pass to reduce the diameter to very small value uh, for the material but in a single pass that is very important per pass this is very important per pass 63 percentage is the maximum reduction in case of drawing process under ideal condition in, uh, the drawing of flat strip the drawing of flat strip means uh, this is not a rod uh, it's actually a rectangular shape okay the similar to the uh, rolling process okay so this will be like this so this will be the, uh, and uh, here we have a die uh, we kept a die here Sorry. Okay. So, um, so this is my workpiece. This is my workpiece, and uh, this is a flat workpiece. And when it is passing through the die opening, uh, its cross section area will decrease. Okay. So this is similar to the drawing pro. Sorry, rolling process. Ro in case of rolling, also we reduce the um uh, cross section area uh, so similarly here also we can do the uh, process okay and here this is also we consider as a plane stress problem sorry plane strain problem in case of rolling process we assume that uh, there is no change in the width of the material uh, after rolling the width is maintained as constant that is one of the assumptions in the uh, rolling process the same assumption can be used here in the drawing process also okay so when we consider as a um, plane strain problem in so sigma f you, we use sigma dash f. sigma dash f. what is sigma dash f? sigma dash f is equal to 2 by root 3 into sigma f so that is the only difference in case of uh, with the respect to uh, rod drawing of rod and drawing of flat strip okay in case of drawing of flat strip we use sigma dash of instead of sigma f that is the only difference okay so this is actually uh, sigma dash y or sigma dash f if there is a uh, play um, strain hardening we use sigma dash f if there is no strain hardening we use sigma dash y so similarly the material sigma y um, is, um, yielded point is sigma y then uh, here in this uh, drawing of flash strip we consider as a uh, plane strain problem so this is uh, plane strain problem okay so we use 2 by root 3 of sigma y that is the sigma dash y okay that is the only difference sigma dash y so the in this equation compared to the previous equations instead of sigma f or sigma y here we use sigma dash f and sigma dash y that is 2 by root 3 of sigma f or 2 by root 3 of sigma y so what is the, how much is the maximum reduction per pass in case of flash strip in case of flash strip here we use sigma not sigma y this is sigma dash y okay and but here this is sigma y okay at the end we are applying uh, actually for the draw uh, for the deformation or elongation of the material the sigma y amount of uh, stress is required but during the drawing process of flash strip that is a plane strain problem in the equation we should use a sigma dash y okay what is the relation between sigma dash y and uh, and uh, sigma y sigma dash y is equal to 2 by root 3 of sigma y okay so here we can substitute log h0 by hf is equal to sigma y by sigma dash y what is sigma y by sigma dash y sigma y by sigma dash y equal to root 3 by 2 so we can substitute here root 3 by 2 so h0 by hf is equal to e raised to root 3 by 2 and then we can substitute that the maximum reduction, reduction per pass that is a0 minus af divided by af is equal to 58 percentage so in case of rod uh, we can reduce up to 63 percentage but but if you use a flat strip we can reduce up to 58 percentage per pass per pass that is also important per pass we can almost half of the uh, initial diameter only we can reduced in case of or uh, not initial diameter is a flat strip initial thickness or initial width okay 
so we can reduce up to 58 percentage per pass in case of wire drawing process or uh, to rod drawing process we can only up to 68 per 63 percentage okay per pass so uh, how can we uh, decrease further further how can we decrease the diameter we can use more than one reduction or we can use more than one pass here we can see this is the die this is the drawing die so after passing through the drawing die it is uh, wound over this uh, caption or drum then again it is passed to the next drawing die okay so this is the next pass so here maximum reduction may be 63 percentage here again we can reduce to 63 percentage here the reduced wire again we can reduce to 63 percentage so by using number of continuous passes we can reduce to very lower value size so that is the multi-stage wire drawing process in a single pass we can um, reduce up to 63 percentage without any um, any fracture but we by using number of such pass we can reduce to very lower value okay so we can see a multi-stage drawing process the iron oxide layer the wire so this is, is the wire a powered capstan draws it through. So this is actually a, a powdered lubricants, and this is the drawing uh, die. A die reducing the diameter. Further reduction can take place using. So this is the maximum dies. reduction at uh, the uh, one pass. Reducing the diameter. Okay, this further is the first pass. This is the first pass through the drawing die. So for, if we need further reduction, we can go for next pass. Reduction can take place using extra dies. Okay, see the drawn this. wire is finally This is the caption. The, this is the next die. This transformation Again, caption. This is the One next die. Of 5 .5 millimeter wire Again, caption. Can be drawn to 30 meters with 1 millimeter diameter or 484 meters with 0 0.25 millimeters diameter. The process increases the tensile and yield strength. So, while how much we can reduce? 30 meters with 5 millimeter. One meter of 5.5 millimeter wire rod can be drawn to 30 meters with one millimeter diameter or 484 meters with 0 0.25 millimeters diameter. The process increases the tensile and yield strength while reducing ductility. So this is the method for producing electrical wire. We know the electrical wire diameter is very small. So, by this method, by using number of passes, we can reduce the rod or any raw material into very small diameter. So, that is the method for making electrical wire or any string materials. After so, we can see the actual process here. This is the wire. So, this is the first drawing die. This one is the first drawing die. This one. This is how to feed the wire. So this is the drawing line. Add the wire drawing line. So this is the first part. After first pass, 
the next two bars will be added to the next two bars. So this is the second bar. Okay, the finger goes here. Here. See this. We have three die. So in this, we have three die. This is the first die, second die, and third die. And uh, after first pass is wound over this caption, then again is passed through the die, then wound over this caption, then passed through this die, then wound over this caption, then finally we have output product. Okay, so this is the multi-stage drawing process to further uh, reduce a very small diameter. So this is this uh, wire, first die, wound over the caption, then again second die, then Caption, etc. Okay, so by means of successive drawing, we can reduce the diameter to very small volume. And in between, we can use annealing process. You know what is annealing process? For example, after this uh, drawing process, we what 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 we do? We heat to uh, a high temperature, then we cool slowly. In this region, we heat to very high temperature, and then we cool slowly. That is annealing process. What happened? So after drawing process, it is a strain hardened material. So the amount of stress required for the strain hardened material is very huge. Okay, how can we reduce the amount of stress required for um, for the drawing of the strain hardening, or how can we uh, remove the strain hardening effect by means of finally? Okay, so we can convert the strain hardened strength material into a soft material by means of finally. So we do intermediate annealing after every drawing process. We do intermediate annealing. Okay, and here we use carbide tip tools or strain high strength steel uh, tools etc to avoid the wear uh, of the die okay it has uh, very good hardness uh, tungsten material tungsten carbide material we can do drawing of tubes similar procedure but we kept a mandrel in between um, thereby we can make a hollow uh, tubes etc using drawing process Okay, this is the stationary mantra uh, we kept here. So, we got a station after drawing process, uh, we got a uh, stationary, I'm sorry, tube like material. And there are different defects associated with the drawing process. Uh, in case of extrusion, we already discussed different defects. The similar defects we can see in the drawing process also. But the main difference is that in the case of extrusion, we apply the compressive force, but here we apply the pulling force. Okay. So the first defect, which is similar to the drawing, pro, um, drawing um, uh, sorry, extruded product, that is the Indiana cracks. Uh, at the center, is, we can at the center of the um, final drawn product, we can see the Indiana cracks. And some seams we can see at the surface, the, some seams or uh, uh, scratches we can see. And if we do any further next process of the drawn component, these scratches may um, actually uh, subsequent uh, rolling, upsetting, heading process, etc. The scratches or such type of faults, etc. may open up and uh, leads to seam defects. Okay. And the residual stress. During the plastic deformation, some amount of residual stress will be created. And if the reduction is very small, the reduction is very small, then the surface region will be under compression. Okay. The surface region will be under compression and the center region will be under tension. The center region of the final drawn material will be under tension. Okay. So there will be a residual stress. Okay. Stress distribution. And the surface compressive stress is actually a, a, a good thing. Uh, we can reduce, uh, we can increase the fatigue life and uh, crack resistance, etc., can be increased by surface compressive stress. Okay, that is a good thing. But if the if we do a large reduction, if we do a large reduction, then finally uh, the surface region will be under tension and the center region will be under compression. Okay, the surface region will be under tension and uh, center region will be under compression. So that will reduce the fatigue life. Okay, we cannot use the such type of material where subject to cyclic loading. Okay, so that is the distribution and the residual stress may cause corrosion cracking and uh, wrapping that is already we discussed in the last ex, uh, extrusion classes. So that also may cause. So this is the distribution of the uh, residual stress. We can see in the radial direction of the final, um, uh, final product in the radial direction, we can see the distribution at the uh, at the center, center region it will be uh, highly compressive. The center region is highly compressive, but at the tip region is almost uh, zero compression. Uh, if it is an ideal case, okay, the zero compression. 
and then the transition direction and the longitudinal direction we can see there will be some tension in the transition direction and the longitudinal direction okay and in the center region we can see compression but in the surface region we can see the tension this is not not, not, not a um, good thing for a final drawn product it leads to affect the um, fatigue life and other crack generation tendency of the final product then drawing practice uh, actually doing uh, when we start the drawing process we need to insert the first workpiece material through the die so for that we need a conical starting point of the work workpiece material for that we can use the swagging process i will explain what is swagging process so to make the conical shape at the starting point of the workpiece we use swagging process so initially we do the swagging process on the initial workpiece then only we can insert through the die okay uh, so for that we use clamp and uh, swagging then we clamp the uh, tip of the workpiece then we do um, apply the tensile force and we can do tandem drawing i already explained that is the multi-stage drawing uh, camston is used to wound the wire or uh, final product that is the drawing process this is already i explained uh, here uh, the this is the workpiece this is a die we apply the tensile force using this setup so this is a multi-stage drawing process and this is already i explained that so what is swagging process to make this type of conical shape at the uh, end of the uh, rod or wire we use swagging process okay so actually swagging process we apply the radial impact force radial impact force to change the cross section or shape of the product okay and here we use rollers this is the swagging process we can see here we have a this yellow color one is different rollers okay so and this roller is actually rotating uh, in a roller bearing and here we can see a wedge shape uh, part which is actually reciprocating so during the rotation we can see the reciprocation of the uh, this wedge shape part and by this reciprocation when we kept the workpiece in between the in this region by this reciprocating motion some amount of radial impact force will be developed on the workpiece and uh, which can be used to deform the uh, material so we can see the swagging process here see this you can see the shape change so, see this so here we, we keep so so we, when this roller is rotating we can see the reciprocating motion in the radial direction see this air this reciprocating motion give an impact force on the workpiece and uh, which deform the material so based on the uh, opening opening shape we got a we, if it is a conical shape we got a output product with a conical shape and we keep a wedge you see this, this is the wedge in between the roller and the and that part so initial work piece is kept there then by this radial impact force, we can change the thing. So same thing is used to change the uh, tip of the rod uh, into conical shape. And this similar process can be used to make uh, uh, tubes also. The swagging process can be used to make a uh, tube also. And this is another two band series. forming machines or swamping machines the, purely uh, operate on a cold process. The production of the Hence, they consume uh, less power, motion. making them highly suitable for industries for mass production of swaged parts. So we can see the rotary swagging process. In row as okay. the spindle so spin in it. When dies are mounted on the machine the spindle roller, located inside a cage containing rollers forward, which is rotated by a motor as the spindle spins inside the rotary swaging machine the dies push out to ride the cage by centrifugal force when the dies cross the rollers they push the dies together due to their large okay two bed so this is the diagram showing the swagging process and we can make varieties of products using swagging process and here we apply the impact force for the plastic deformation and uh, another thing regarding this uh, we can apply high rate of impact force uh, 20 stroke per second that's my speed we can apply uh, the impact force and uh, this is the die closing swagging machine and uh, 
there is a reciprocating motion of the wedges creating plastic deformation then coming to the application the main thing the i explained the we can create the tip of the uh, raw material for the drawing operations into a conical shape using swagging process then uh, why drawing uh, coming to the applications of drawing process uh, we can use drawing process to make wire this is a very important process most commonly we using drawing process for making wires this is a very uh, important application of the drawing process and uh, musical instruments i i already explained the different applications and the uh, large cross sections we can use this in elevator temperature in that case we should consider the strain rate and uh, in cold drawing we uh, consider the strain hardening and the intermediate tunneling is required in case of cold drawing because uh, during the cold drawing there will be a chance for the strain hardening so between the pass if if there is a strain hardening in the next pass there is a difficulty for the drawing uh, under normal tem uh, normal uh, stress and the stress has to apply so this may be leads to fracture so intermediate annealing can be reduce the flow stress of the material thereby we can do the drawing process in a minimum stress and uh, uh, this is the steel wires for string and musical instruments are made by heat treatment process that proceeds or follow the drawing operation uh, patenting and this wire have uh, ultimate tensile strength of 4800 megapascal and tensile reduction of 20 percentage is possible okay so these are the applications so that is about the drawing process and uh, so uh, this is the last uh, plastic deformation process uh, when we consider the syllabus and we studied different plastic deformation process uh, like uh, rolling uh, first we studied rolling then forging process we studied then extrusion then um, drawing process and then swagging process uh, so the main uh, plastic deformation process uh, commonly used in industries and uh, as i said in the initial lectures in the introduction area uh, most of the industries the total gdp when we consider the total gdp of the country the plastic deformation industries contribute to very large value okay so that is the importance of plastic deformation most of the material or products we used nowadays is the product from a plastic deformation process uh, we can use this type of uh, process for the production of different components okay up to this i uh, thank you all of you